All right, we're going. I have to say, as a child of the late 80s and early 90s, it is surreal to have James Eckhouse conversing before. I mean, I feel like Brandon Walsh himself being almost lectured by Jim Walsh about the dangers of gambling. It gives me that stern, it gives me that stern look, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, I might, I might have to reprimand you for some of the things you've done over the last week. <laughs> well, I mean, I, my little webcam has been following you oh, around, oh, well, so, that's, you know. Well, that's a problem. And, uh, yeah, my my children never grow up. So just so you know, <laughs> so you're just one of the one of the kids. Excellent, excellent. Um, so you know, it's funny. So I, you know, you would send a message to Colin, my uh, producer, and you would say, "Hey, I don't know. You know, let's not uh, getting episode by episode intricate stuff like that. You know, you're not going to know a lot about. So I guess I will. You know, I have notes about season three, episode four. I have twenty five, thirty thousand notes on it, but that's fine. I I'll, I I could talk to somebody else about it. But you. But, but you don't, uh, yeah. you know, it's funny. So I do this show and within this show, we now have people doing wrap up shows of my old shows a couple. And I couldn't tell you one thing about a show I did. I can't imagine talking about an episode 35 years ago or 25. It's, it, it, it uh, you know, I, I, this is a terrible thing to say, but people say, oh, you know, what's it like when you watch the show? And I say, I make the shit. I don't have to watch it. I make <laughs> well, the shit, you know, and making the shit, excuse my language. That's all here. You're okay. It's a yeah. whole different thing than watching it. Right. Right. But there must be, you know, stu- there must be um, stuff of yours. That, thing, yeah. There must be stuff of yours that you've watched over the years. Well, 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 it's interesting when I, when I start, you know, you know, coming into the show, you got to realize it was such a different animal for me. I, I had been an actor in New York for a long time. Mm-hmm. Theater was my jam. Mm-hmm. My wife and I were both working and we never, thought for a second that we would leave the center of the universe. I mean, like, why would you leave the center of the universe? You know, right. right. And the idea of going to Los Angeles mm-hmm. was what, you know, we're, and she's East coast all the way. I'm Midwest, mm-hmm. but lots, you know, we'd spent 15, 20 years in New York. So when, and then I came out and it, I really love being here. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to diss LA. It's and we've been here 35 years. So of course, obviously. Sure. Right. But, you know, you get on a show like that. And of course, I mean, Shannon had done Little House. Yeah, I remember her on Little House in the Prairie. Yep. So she yep. kind of, yeah, yeah. She kind of knew the ropes. The other guys, for the most part, had not had this kind of success that quickly, you know. And of course, believe it or not, it was about them. I know that's hard to imagine, but it really wasn't. Yeah, but, but let me say, though, that, right? though at first, like, is somebody who watched the show is a big fan of the show. That is not what mm-hmm. season one was about. Like, you know, not to get, no, not to get grant. I mean, it, it was almost like, it was almost a little like TV movie of the week. Like, oh, Brandon meets a black family and oh, Brand, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, and like, yeah. you know, that kind of thing well, where, where you were, you and, uh, you and Cindy were super involved, but then, I mean, this is the way it goes. Teenagers are watching it and Luke Perry breaks out. and Yeah, 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 yeah. That must I be know, the weird I, I dynamic. I, I said, you know, the first season is, first season is, um, Hey, walk downstairs. They come, you know, say hello to Brandon. You're going out tonight? Okay, kids, you know, (laughs) be careful. Goodbye. See you later. Next season, it's like, okay, kids, have a good time. Third season is, you know, we're behind a rock going, (laughs) take care of yourself, you know. And the fourth season, you can't even see us. That's that's kind of like. Again, not, not to get super specific here, but, you know, I'm an admirer of Jim Walsh, the man. Jim Walsh, the man, would never have allowed that all those people to be living that house when they moved to Hong Kong. There's, the, there's, there's no fucking way. He would have sold that house in two seconds. No way. No way. Exactly. No way. Exactly. Jason and I, Jason and I decided that we were going to have to do an episode after I left the, you know, I left after five years, to right. move to Hong Kong. So we were going to do an intervention and it turns out that Jim Walsh is being held in a prison because of his accounting <laughs> practices in China. And and like and that. Luke and Jason get some kind of like a SWAT team and they come down in helicopters it's and like, take me out of the... It's like Rambo, this Rambo 6, yeah. But, but for some reason, Aaron Spelling didn't buy it and I never quite understood that. But anyway, yeah. Was, was there a moment where you realized in like... Because for me, like as a kid who grew up in Massachusetts, at that point, the show got sort of like nuclear... That, that first summer, that sort of second sort of half season that went from kind of, in, was there a moment where you were walking down the street? Is it, is it that simple and all of a sudden like you're famous or is it sort of a slower thing? Here, so, so here's the moment. 
You ready for the moment? I'm ready. Got two kids. I, 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 I'm not even watching the show. I kid you not. I, you know, just as a side note, I didn't, I didn't let my kids watch the show. They were five, four and one, right? You know, and then they were ten and whatever by the end. So they never even seen an episode. I, I, I just kept them away from it. I coached soccer every weekend. I was redoing my house myself. I bought a house. I did all the work, all the plumbing, all the, you know, I'm a crazy guy. Right. Not, <laughs> not your normal actor. So. Right. I'm doing my stuff, you know, with my family and we're, we, my sister had a place up in Lake Tahoe. So we would drive up to Lake Tahoe for those of you on the East coast. Mm -hmm. It's about a nine hour drive. You drive up along the Eastern part of the Sierras. It's a beautiful drive and it's the summer. We've been doing those summer episodes, which was very smart so that we're on the air and other people aren't, you know, Jason and I are still taking bets. How many seasons? I mean, like how many more episodes before they pull the plug? I'm not right. kidding you. We were like, you know, Dude, this is not gonna, you know. So whatever. And we and, fo and Fox and so, Fox is still Fox is still a pretty new thing at that point. It's not, you know, it's a unusual. It's not even thing. a network yet. Right, 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 right. Yet. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yes. Yeah. Look at look look at my look at my uh, residuals in your. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So yeah. um, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> we're driving up and uh, in in the white Burbo van. It's probably a nine year old Plymouth, uh, you know, Voyager white van, the one that we keep around. And we got the kids in the back and you know so one is one one is four whatever and we stop always at the halfway point is a town called bishop california there's it's probably 130 degrees there right now so we get out and there's this beautiful park that we stop at right and so uh my wife takes my older son because there's a tennis match and he loves tennis so she goes off to the tennis match i take my younger son and i go to the swing sets and of course he's little so he goes into those ones with the rubber thing and i put him in and i'm having a great time pushing him and i see seriously like 50 yards away this kind of older guy in his 40s um and and his obviously his daughter or something like that and they're kind of staring at me and i'm getting like it's kind of creepy like i'm like you know i don't think anything of it but i'm like oh you know so I'm pushing and I see them get up and walk off and they walk over the hill. There's like a berm, like a hill. And obviously they're going towards the tennis. About 10 minutes later, my wife comes over the hill. She's dragging my son. I mean, dragging him. He's not even walking. He's like right. <laughs> dragging right. along. Right. And she, she, she comes up to me in the swing set and she says, get in the car now. And I said, what? She said, take, take your son, get in the car now and i was like okay okay and i pick up my poor little one-year-old right. and i'm like we're going towards the car and i look back and it's like children of the damned i kid you there was like 60 <laughs> 70 kids coming down the hill coming at me and i i freaked out i mean you know it really was i was like not prepared for this whatsoever and we get in the car you know Two years later, I would have been a far more circumspect and been like, oh, okay, okay, everybody come around, let me sign some autographs. You know, right. I had no, I just was, you know, and I, with my kids, you're, you're sure, very of course, protective, protective them, you know? yeah. So, you know, and we get in the kit and we slam the door just before their faces come up Jesus. against the car. Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh, <laughs> right. Mr. Walsh, you know, and and I, I just and my wife turned to me and goes, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> and well, that, you, but you, you still look like Jim Walsh. Like you look great. Like I bet you get recognized. <laughs> well, you do. You do. Well, uh, yeah. well, let's, let's get James. If I could be honest, Jim Walsh was fighting that even, even early on in nine two. I mean, you know, Jim Walsh okay, was strong. Okay, it's I'm just, true. I'm just, it's you know, true. I mean, it looked That's good. True. It looked good with the sweaters and everything. It wasn't a bad look. But you know, I would think every time you go out, somebody says That's Jim Walsh. That must happen all the time. Still, no, no. Oh really. bullshit! You're being modest. Fact, Not true. No, I'm not being modest. I mean, I, you know, or I know that sometimes, sometimes I'll come home. You, I'm such a schlemiel. I'm a, schl I'm a slob. I'm, I, I, I have not changed my mo. I mean, that, I, and that's the way I was on the show as well. I really did. I, I didn't do a lot of publicity. I think they stuck me on one early morning talk show with James Earl Jones. Right. And I'd been up all night because my one of my sons had had was throwing up all night, you know, and I get on the show and I'm like circles under my eyes. It's my first talk show. There's, you know, the publicity people at Fox are like, OK, let's test this guy. Let's see how he does, you know. Right. And I and I get on the show and the guy and the guy's real sweet. And he's talking to me. And finally, after about five minutes, he turns to me and he goes, man, you are really dark. 
I, said, I mean, I was tired. Right. <laughs> That's what he says to me. And then, and then he, and then, and it's commercial break. And he goes, "Thank you very much." And they <laughs> come and they take me away. <laughs> and that was my three minutes of fame. It was like, no, we're not going to put Eckhouse on the talk shows. I don't think it's going to work too well. It, that, the point is, I I came into it and acting for me is very different. I mean, I know the the concept in the public is so hyped up by the media. It, 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 and, and that's how they sell product. That's how they sell Tom Cruise is by, you know, so there's a vertical sense, like climbing the ladder, get who's on top, how much will, how many, how many millions is Tom Cruise getting? Uh oh, Tom Hanks is getting this much, you know, the right. competition, you know, and the, the, the who's on top. I go that way. I mean, I, I never really aspired to the top thing. I, I, I like did a show on Broadway a few years ago. And one of my favorite things of being in the show on a Broadway play is, you know, and I played three different characters was with Brian Cranston. I took a subway home every night, right? Mm -hmm. So I take my makeup off, da, 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 get on the subway. And there are people with the program of the show that I was just in four or five people, you know, they've all come down from the east side and they're all talking about the show and they have no idea that's right. me. None. Right. Right. I mean, they're just talking. Oh, yeah. The la that didn't work. This didn't work. I love that. I yeah. love being anonymous. Yeah. The role an actor. Am I right that the role was originally cast with the guy who played Ferris Bueller's dad? Of Jim Walsh? Uh, Lyman, no, was, it was, it was, uh, Lyman, um, it was, yeah. Did yeah. Lyman play? Yeah. Lyman Ward. Lyman he, Ward. Yeah. He yeah. played, Lyman. I think he played Ferris Bueller's yeah. dad, like white haired guy. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. He was originally cast, right? Yeah. I, you know what? He did. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Cause he was wasp. Right. They decided to go with a Jew because you know, that made so much sense. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, I never thought uh, of that. Yeah. Is that an Aaron, is that an Aaron spelling move? I guess, or <laughs> that's definitely an Aaron spelling move. So I don't know. Did Cindy ever tell you this story? Cindy. No, no. Um, Cindy, um, uh, uh, hello, um, Carol Potter, but she, she, Carol, yeah, yeah, Carol had been cast. Of course they recast the role. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, it's down to three people. I go into Aaron and I three, the other three or four people, the other three actors I know very well, mm -hmm. very handsome, very wasp looking guys, you know, and I was like, I don't have a chance, you know? I go in, we do kind of a read with Carol, sort of a, I guess you'd call it like a chemistry read, you know? And Carol and I are having a great time. And I leave, and Carol told me this later, and Aaron, Aaron Spelling turns to everybody and goes, you know, there's something about that Eckhouse guy. There's something about that Eckhouse guy. And Carol turns to him and goes, yeah, because he's Jewish, Aaron. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's how he got the role, I think. I don't know. Well, it was funny I mean, watching. We laugh at that. Yeah, it was funny watching now, too, and then going backwards, like when I'd watch old movies I liked, and like you randomly popped up, and for me as a kid, in Trading Places, Fatal Attraction, Big Cocktail, you're at the bar doing the, uh, doing the, do you have, do you have any, <laughs> my brothers and I used to rewind all the time and just laugh, That's Jim Walsh just waving for, like, do you have any memories of being, on the set of cocktail, like what? What? How does that? What is a day Huge like that? Memories. What is a day like that? Where that is it? Was, walk, walk me through that. Okay, because that was that was really one of my most fun things to do. Yeah. You, so I'm in New York. We at that point was Xander born. Yeah, Xander was born. So we had a six month old. We were desperate. We both worked all the time in theater. Mm -hmm. We made you know bubkas. We made you know right. two cents a week, and right. that's what you're trying to live on as an actor, <laughs> right? Right. 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 Uh, yeah. So a casting director, wonderful. She was kind of a friend. She comes up to me. She goes, you know, she calls me. She says, look, there's this small part in a film. You'd have to go to Jamaica. Would you mind doing it? Oh, uh, <laughs> nah, I think I think that's OK. You know, <laughs> right. middle winter I, I, when it was like November or something. Right. And I said, sure, sure, sure. I do, you know, and it was supposed to be a week gig. And I get down there and it's with Tom Cruise. It's this movie called Cocktail. We're shooting it in Jamaica, okay? In Ocho Rios. The hotel where Tom and all the rest of the groovy people are supposed to stay, which is a beautiful old hotel in Ocho Rios, is filled up. So, Eckhouse, we're gonna have to put you in another place. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. It's the Aga Khan's ex-wife's private estate. It's on 15 acres. 
I have my own little cabana. I have two housekeepers, two cooks, all to myself. Oh, and one other guy who's in the, in the in the movie. It was insane. I got up every. I mean, this is terrible to say. I got up every morning, you know, looked around like what fruit would I pick and have for my breakfast, you know. This went on. And what happened is they fired the DP after a week because the back, you know, for some reason, the lighting was was crap. So what was going to be a one week job turned into a three week job. Wow. Jesus. And I my day, my day was have some breakfast, wait for them to pick me up, go down to the beach, take out the windsurfer, go windsurfing. <laughs> Maybe they'd call me to set two o'clock in the afternoon, come in muck around with tom had a great time love tom cruise such a great i mean at that it was he was really fun we all went deep sea fishing you know it was the life that's wild it, it was the exact opposite of life in new york because that's I, what that that because i don't think you have a line in the finished film no no to, everything i said they, it, they took it <laughs> so out. you spent a fortune I didn't actually right. have a line yeah 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 they spent a fortune on me and finally at one point the producer came to where i was living and we were at uh, Court, uh, um, Robert Court, he, you know, big time producer. Mm -hmm. He comes to play tennis with me. I said, come on, come play tennis with me. I got a great tennis court, you know. <laughs> so we're playing and he comes to see where I am. And he go, and, and I get a, a call from my agent. He's furious. <laughs> he said, get him out of there. We're not putting up this, <laughs> this you know, two, right. two, two line actor at this place. And of course, I had a really good agent at the time. And he said, nope. He's not moving. Mm -mm, sorry, you're too bad. How about so that uh, was, it was it was one of those wild experiences. How about trading places? That's your first film role, I think, and you're the line in it. Billy Ray Valentine. You you call him out of uh, you, when he's in jail, Eddie Murphy. Do you remember that? Yeah, Eddie. Oh yeah, yeah. That we shot that um, with John Landis, and it was one of my first movies. I've just graduated from Juilliard. I didn't know anything about anything. You know, I did. I, and I was cocksure of myself i had confidence then i don't know what happened but anyway back then i did and uh i'm at the audition and john is on the phone he's on i mean landis is let's just say it's quite a character okay as and you know right a nice size ego sure. so he's sitting there on the phone and i'm and he's behind the desk and i'm coming to audition you know and phone call, yeah, 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 he's talking, blah, 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 you know, and then he hangs up and he goes, oh, oh wait, who are you? I said, I'm, J oh, wait a minute, hello, yeah, 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 blah, 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 and this goes on for like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm getting pissed off. And finally, the next time the phone rings, I climb over his desk and I take the phone and I go, Mr. Landis's office, no, he can't talk to you right now. And I hung up. <laughs> Is that true? Wow, Jesus, you have balls. <laughs> Some real yeah. balls, good for you. I said, I had balls. I had balls back then. So, How much? Know, he loved that. Yeah. He loved that. Do you around Eddie Murphy at all? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to. No. You know, I didn't hobnob with anybody. We were shooting in the tombs, you know, the tombs in New York, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and it was working. It was operational. They, and I didn't realize that. And they put me on the floor. Way, he, John wanted to do this long shot of me coming down the hall. And he goes, no, no, we got to put him in that other part. And there was this big open elevator between. And the next thing I know, the I, there, I'm waiting for the shot to start. And the crew is 50 yards away down the other end, you know. And I'm getting a little nervous because I'm, you know, by myself. And then this, the elevator comes up with about 40 inmates who are, you know, jeering and laughing and there's nothing between me and the inmates <laughs> right and I, I was I, it was uh, it was but it was um you know it was fun it was a few days small role of course how about how about uh I'll how about take anything how about big uh that really was my first that i mean i had done movies in chicago but that really i think big was my first role yeah that i did on a film on a big film I had done TV movies and stuff like that. You know, right. Um, again, not not a lot of days. Uh, it was it was interesting because I didn't know how to behave on a set, and I, you know, you don't know who to who to talk to, and are you do you talk to the DP or do you just not talk to the crew? You know, I I had that kind of like I've never really been on a big set before, and Tom Hanks 
and I can call him Tom because I just worked with his his wife uh, Rita. We did a movie together, and she's a doll, and he's a doll. He's just you know he's who he is, down completely down to earth. But I watched him. He was in character the whole time. He was this kooky, weird kid, you know, and the concentration that he had, staying to himself, was such a lesson, you know, about holding on to yourself and holding on to your work and your concentration when you're in the middle of this insane zoo of people lighting, people coming up and making you up and, you know, people talking to you and trying to make jokes and actors coming up to you and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's it's chaos. And it really does take a great deal of uh, a, a concentration to sort of not give yourself away, you know, not go to craft services and eat a lot of sugar and, you know, you get bored and you start eating or whatever, and not losing your energy. Did you and find... He, it was really... What? No, I'm saying, did you find that to be difficult as you, like you got on season three, season four, season five? Maybe you weren't as invested in 90210. Was it harder to act on the show or did you find it? It was you just show up and you do your job. No, that was, no, that, that was really what a gift because you own the set, you know, and I started directing on it, which right. I just love doing. That was my favorite to direct. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the only, the only, yeah, the, keeping the quality and really, you know, it was, it could have, it could be easy to let scenes become flaccid, if that makes sense. Sure. Lax, you know, and you're, and everybody is, um, I mean, particularly the guys, I mean, you know, it, it they were a lot of fun to work with. Uh, you know, they, obviously I was in a different um, generation, but they were very, inclusive and um ian and luke who is I, did you ever look on this luke is one no of the, no was one of the most genuine um uh, uh real um generous i mean i could tell you stories about him with with the fans he he was just I, I had lunch with him like like a week before he died and i was like he He'd, t he'd had some problems, but I didn't think he was, you know, sick or anything like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I love Luke. Yeah. But Luke and, and Ian and, and uh, Jason, we, you know, we, it was, it was fun. And so the problem was, you know, we started goofing around a lot and poor directors, I mean, would try to get us to stop laughing or stop farting around. Right. I find, the, was, you know, but yes, it was hard. Yeah. You, go ahead. No, I was saying, I just, I find the life of a, like a working actor to be so. So if I look at your IMDb page, your Wikipedia page, you pop up in a television episode or two every year, maybe two a year, take a year off, do one. I find that career to be just sort of fascinating and that you're kind of waiting for things to come to you, right? I mean, there's not much you can do in terms of being aggressive. That, that's, I, that, that, like I said, I'm a vertical person. So right. um, I, uh, like I just directed a very difficult play uh, I do, I, I've run theater companies. I've been the artistic director of theater companies here. I, you know, to me, it's all the work. So I teach now. Um, and I tell my students, you know, one day, literally I'm at the golden globes and the next day I'm cleaning toilets in my theater company. Right. And to me, it's, I, I just, it's all the same. It's if you get really caught up with the fame, look, if you're going to be famous, <clears throat> like, it's really instructive. Like I was in a movie with Renee Zellweger and, and Meryl Streep, and it, and it was really a lot of fun playing with Renee Zellweger. And it was some, you know, big opening. And I, you know, my wife and I generally didn't do the red carpet bull, bullshit, you know, but we were like, oh, let's go. And the, my agent said, no, 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 you've got you've to gotta do the thing. You know, you got to show up. So I went to the opening and it was a big, you know, premiere at some whiz bang, whatever place in Hollywood. <laughs> with the lights and the whole thing, you know, and you're walking the red carpet. It, and, you know, it's kind of like, who are you? No, but, you know, there was a few people like, oh, Mr. Eckhoff, Mr. Eckhoff. Right. But there was a star. I won't even say who it was. A One of the top box office stars who had nothing to do with the movie. Nothing. But he was there at the opening, you know, instead of staying home, uh, you know, playing video games. He's there that night doing the red carpet. Of course, as soon as he shows up, it's like they're all over him. And he's doing this kind of casual, like, 
Oh, really? You're taking pictures? It was it was so <laughs> um, so constructed. You know what I mean? It was the 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 nonchalant kind of movie star thing that he put on was was completely constructed, right? He so that poor guy to maintain his status as number one star had to go to all these openings for movies that he had nothing to do with. Right. You know, and I don't even think he knew the director. So that's a business unto itself, you know. And if you're going to do that, you know, then if you've got the ego for it and that's that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I still, I, I, so when you say I'm waiting around, I'm never waiting around, okay? I'm writing, I'm teaching, right. I'm doing plays, things that have very little significance to the public at large. Right. So it kind of counteracts the what they think of as a star yeah you know what i mean yeah so you, uh, yeah so you have to i kind of let that go early on right no i didn't mean i didn't mean like you're sitting around waiting for the phone ring i just mean like when they're no no but yeah, i mean but yeah. If, but when if you're yeah if you're looking at the imdb page right then you go oh okay well he's working this much this much you know yeah but uh, you know i'm uh, like i just um uh you know uh i i, I did a two per a two-hander that was the most, you know, that's where, where we're talking about knowing about, like in people's minds. And it, I do the same thing. Look, I do the same thing. I see, you know, it, uh, uh, I, I, I went to a play on Broadway and I saw, um, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think of him as, as Picard. You know, I can, I, Patrick you know, Stewart. Like, yeah. That's who he is to me, yeah. you know. Patrick Stewart, yeah. you know, and we're both on Broadway at the time and he was lovely. We started talking, but I can't get, Picard out of my mind, you right. know, and here he is. He's doing he's doing um, uh, Waiting for Godot on Broadway, and he was incredible in it. But I so you know, of course, we're in people's living rooms. We're in their psyche. We're in your psyche. You're terrified to meet me because you know that I'm going to reprimand you because I'm your father. You know, you have this thing. <laughs> so, um, so of course, but but from an, from my point of view, like people will say you know, like, what was it like? And uh, as if that, as if that world is right there for me, it's like, that's what I'm living. Well, yeah, right. doing that to doing that 200 for 40 people a night, 40 people a night. Okay. Not a big effect in the world. Right. I had a 45 minute monologue. Let me tell you a 45 minute monologue in front of people, no net, very difficult monologue, Shit. very, very right. brutal, upsetting. And then another 35 minute monologue, you know, doing that every night is like tightrope walking. Now, that experience, that's still living in my brain. Okay, right. that's a visceral being on Broadway, and meeting Nancy Pelosi and Eric Holder and having the Clintons come backstage, and working with Brian Cranston, and the people who and 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 meeting John Lewis, who was one of the most amazing people you could ever imagine. Um, that, you know, doing that for a year, my hard drive, the other stuff, it's gone. It's not even there anymore. And I, I, I treasure the experience. Of course, I love it. I'm old, my memory's bad anyway. So, you know, as an actor, you do, you, you learn lines, you have an experience, and then for me, you gotta you gotta clean the hard drive, because the next experience you have has got to be the be all end all. I can't do a project and have it not be my full concentration. Like this is do or die, and right. then the next one's do or die, and then the next one's do or die. Does that make sense? Sure. I guess I would ask you, Matt. You know, John Lewis. Would you say historically, in terms of civil rights, would you go John Lewis? Martin Luther King or Brandon Walsh as president of California University ending some of the racial strife. It's very difficult, I think, to figure out who would be the most important, wouldn't you say? That's a tough one. Yeah, it's That's not easy. I mean, it's I not easy, right? You know, it isn't, it isn't easy. Tremendous, I mean, I I'll Brandon tell you, a tremendous a pressure for a, for, a, for a kid. In, as I remember, my college uh, student body president didn't really have to deal with these things that Brandon did. It was really a, a lot going on while living yeah. at home. It was a lot going. Uh, yeah, and like you were saying, I mean, going back to the show, I do, I do love the fact that for the first two years, Chuck, who you know was the showrunner, the producer, who's uh -huh. really the whole energy behind it, and we're still friends. Charles Rosen. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chuck yeah. Rosen. Um, 
who and he was devoted to making it about something you know about really making that and that's why it was successful mm -hmm. because it was it was stuff that teenagers actually dealt with oh for sure you know in, in, in their lives you know along with the soap opera part of it of course and the who's more popular but <clears throat> you know pregnancy and drugs and alcohol and racism and even though it was beverly hills but you know yeah they tried and they did a good job for a good couple of years did you uh enjoy on being on an episode of the west wing which i just saw recently again you remember doing that or no i uh, he's not, I'm glad you remember that. I do remember that, and I did two of those. Right, a lot of Rob and Lowe then, in the episode. Uh, the, the first one. A I lot said. of Rob Lowe. Rob, yeah. Rob is fun. And then my my son actually did a movie with Rob, so um, he's he's aces. And I did another show with him, so he he was great. I mean, the the set. Oh my God, the set was incredible. It was on the Warner Brothers lot, and I remember. Um, you know, you go to makeup and you're, blah, 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 you're sort of out in one of the trailers out on the out on the tarmac. It's mm -hmm. hot as all hell. And then the the second AD comes and goes, Mr. Eckhouse, they want you on the set. And you're like, OK. And you and you, you know, the outside of it is these crappy, huge, you know, the sound stages. They look mm -hmm. like big warehouses, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are big warehouses. And you you open the big, you know, um, just like a blast door because they want to keep the sound out. You go through the blast door and you walk in and all of a sudden you are in the White House. I mean, you and I mean, of course, it's not the same, but you're walking through corridors. You go into the Oval Office. It has a view, of course, on a, you know, projected on the back or whatever of the, you know, of the White House. It's surreal how right. that they took two two sound stages and I think put them together so that they had all the offices. You could do these long shots where you walk. It was, I love that. It was cool. And I mean, it was really fun to be on the show. No, I'm interested as an actor. Like at that point, you've been on a bunch of stuff. Are you, were you, are you past the point, even at that point in your career, do you not audition? Like, do you audition now? Like if you're doing like an NCIS or whatever, say <laughs> like, I, d d d <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know shit. I'm asking That's you. I don't know anything. I know, man. That's the thing. I do keep on. Of course I keep auditioning. The, James Eckhouse has, Jim Walsh has to, James Eckhouse has to audition for fucking NCIS. That's a crime. That's not right. So when are you moving out here to be my <laughs> done sold i'll make it happen I, okay well, you're on dude that's it i love it <laughs> well it seems like so I love like, that like, attitude. Like, like like you're super playful you seem like a great guy but it seems to me like now when james echoes is cast on the tv show like super smart super serious like kind of a scientist or like a thoughtful guy or it, there seems to be some sort of typecast that i don't think is you know i'm not saying you're not a smart guy but you're also playful and i i you know, it, 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 I, I don't see a lot of that in your in your TV resume the last 10 or 15 years. We need to get to work on that. We need to fix that. I can make that happen for you. We need to fix that. I did I did a series, one of my favorite series I did. You, you, you never would have seen it. It was on HBO. It was all, um, they, everybody was, was uh, uh, Latino, so I was the only gringo. And I played a crazy um, mad scientist. What show is this? Dr. Let me look Nuts. it up. Uh, we, ended, we ended up calling it... Um, high and mighty i think okay yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we had a b better title it was it's like we did nine episodes it, it was really shot on the run it was completely you know basement a bargain basement kind of thing right but i had a ball because i played a mad scientist which really is it's so funny you say that you know science is my that's my pornography you know i love i still love science <laughs> yeah mit um, right i have a lot of friends Yes, I was studying uh, physics and biology, and then my minor was um, Wellesley College women, and uh, <laughs> the minor took over. It's so weird. That's... Strange how that works. It's weird. You it's go funny for, how that works. Yeah, you go from trying to be a rocket scientist at MIT to, you know, 10 years later, sing karaoke with Dean Kane in front of a, uh, you know, it's just weird how life works. It's strange. It's a step up. I agree. Oh, I, agree. Up. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Have you been? But you, I, I do. I do some. No, I'm sorry. I was gonna ask. Were you hesitant? Like, was there a point in your life? Like, I always see this with musicians, where, you know, like for a while, Kenny Loggins like resisted Footloose and stuff like that. Was there a point in your career where you were like, "Fuck 90210"? Like, I don't want to be defined by this. Or did you always sort of embrace that that there was a fan base that loved it? Like, were you? Did you try and run from yeah, it at that's all? A, that's a that's a that's a really good question because. 
you know, the the re, you can tell. I mean, I'm you know I'm a very real person, so I, I it's it it can be very invasive. Um, particularly, I'm just I you know I adore my kids more than anything. Sure. You know, like so I was very protective of them. And you know, if you're out to dinner or something like that, or you're you're at the mall, this would happen. You know, um, a woman would come and thrust a seven-year-old at me, I kid you not, and go, I don't know what to do with Johnny. You really? gotta take, you gotta do something. Really? Jesus. Like, I play a dad on TV. <laughs> I don't know what to do with your Johnny. Please leave me alone, you know? And my kids are like, oh my God, you know, they're terrified. So it's very invasive and you, you it's, um, you, 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 you have to be graceful. But I mean, the other side of it though is, I, you're deeply grateful to the fans. I, I really love the fans because I wouldn't have, the, the show wouldn't be the show without it. And I love knowing that people are being affected by it. You know, and I, I, I do get people coming up to me now, <clears throat> ancient people like you, yeah, well, who are in their yeah. 90s. Yeah, soon. Um, yeah, um, who've lost all their hair. Um, <laughs> and uh, coming up to me and saying, you know, you were, you were, had a big effect on me. And, and I think it's, it's humbling. You know, it's humbling and it, it, it does make, so long story. Um, I really, I, I forget, believe me, it once a month, yes, somebody might say, oh, wait a minute, aren't you, whatever. But I'm in LA, so people, you know, I'm right. lower level celebrity. It's well, like, you know, they're they're more excited about seeing Dean than they are about me. Right. Um, so it doesn't really affect my life that much, but I, 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 again, and I came into it having had, I mean, not a career that meant anything to People Magazine, but to me, you know, I had done a lot. I had a lot of theater companies, directed a lot. So I was lucky. I took it kind of, and my, my agent, I'll never, an agent who I had then who was really smart, he said, James, don't, don't swallow the, don't, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Just do your work. Don't try to make this, you know, into, I mean, I wish I had in some ways parlayed in that into a little bit more, um, being a little bit more marketable, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really good at that. Like I said, I wish I had in some ways I'd have maybe a little bit more leverage, but I didn't. And on the balance of things, I've had a really incredible life and I've been able to do all kinds of things because I'm not really caught up with that. Right. So that's right. for me. And that's just me. Yeah. You know, people yeah. can say, what an idiot. You, you had your chance, you know, but I just, I took, I took it the way I took it. I just wonder. So like you're, you know, probably in your late thirties, early forties or whatever, when it's breaking out and I'm a little older than that, but late. I could, Oh, but when, when the show broke out, I mean, cause I think you were like, you were like 37, 38 when the show oh, started. I'm, when now that, I'm at 37. Right, 37. Yes, I was saying, yeah, you were four when you were cast as Jim Walsh. It was weird. It was gutsy casting yes. by yeah. Aaron Spelling, but still. But I, like, I wonder, you know, for me, if I, if my I life, was, if my life was kind of dictated by what kind of mood like famous 19 year old girls were in that week, it might drive me fucking crazy. It might drive me fucking crazy. I wish some of those 19 year old girls would have. But anyway, no. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I, I, <laughs> No, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I, I, like I said, I was very. There's a lot of drama. Very protective. Yeah, just a lot of drama with the whole Shannon Doherty, Jenny Gar. Like it just, it was, it, it would be going to work would seem half a pain in the ass sometimes with that stuff. That's all. Is an adult. He's trying to get something, folks. He's trying to work something out. No, you see where he's trying? No, to do? no, no. Sure no. It is. Good, this is good interviewing. Well, well, this is good interviewing, Kirk. Oh, years um, have passed. Years have no, passed. The, no, no the, hard feelings. Some of the, Let's just say the set did have a certain drama to it, which was, which could get in the way of the work. And, you know, I didn't really care if Jenny or Shannon was wearing the pink dress and I wasn't. I mean, I just didn't really care that much <laughs> about my pink dress. Sure, I understand. So, um, yeah, you understand. So I, I you know, it, but it, it more than a lot of shows, the ambiance or the whatever the the atmosphere on the show could could be a little caught up in stuff. And um, but then you had to just sort of cut through it, you know. But it never. I mean, 
I, I was just so happy to be working. And I'll tell you something, working, you know who was really fun to work with was Shannon. Isn't that interesting? I really adored her. Adore her. I bet she was a, um, I bet she was a total pro. I, is, I bet she was a total pro. I mean, she acted since she was a kid, right? I bet she was, knew everything she, Well, cold. not just that, but she, yeah. you know, she, she, she had a lot going on emotionally, which she used. And I always felt, even though sometimes she brought in a lot of stuff from outside and the surus of what, it, you know, it's a Hebrew, <clears throat> Yiddish word, going, going for, you know, all the stuff going on around her, they all did. But when it came to the work, you know, she was right there for you, for me. And we had a, we had a really great screen relationship, which I treasured. And when I directed her, she was awesome to work with. Well, I thought you were, my, so, my favorite you know, scenes is, yeah, my favorite scenes in the series, honestly, like I was talking to my brother today because we were all excited they're interviewing you. Like, it was almost like you were like Dylan's dad. Like your scenes with Luke Perry are actually like my favorite yeah. in the series. Like, yeah, and, like, and, and, and Luke, I forgot to say that, yes. I mean, I did a weird thing when I, my first episode directing, I said, you know, I did, I mean, I, I was, came from the theater. So it's like you rehearse and I said, hey, you know, Luke and whoever else it was, I said, let's, let's go in your trailer and let's, let's run through the scene. And, and nobody had done that on this. It was like, what? <laughs> and people were looking at me like, are you crazy? And right. I was like, yeah, let's rehearse it. Let's talk it through. We don't have time to do it. It was a tough scene. And Luke was like, oh man, that's great. Let's, you know, totally into it and, and willing to, yes, Luke, I, I love working with Luke. He was great. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I had a great relationship with everybody and it was, you know, it really was, it was fun. And there's a part of the, the fame thing, the two minutes of fame that I had that, of course, it's very seductive. You know, it is seductive to have people come running at you at the airport, you know. And yeah. then there are times like when I'm with my family family, I grew up in a big family, four sisters, you know, we like my becoming an actor in my family was kind of like, oh, James, you want to be a prostitute? That's so <laughs> nice. You know, that's about, you know, you're going to be a scientist and I'm going to be a, right. an actor. Was right. My, my right. poor father never, <laughs> never, ever forgave me. Um, so this whole thing, the Michigas of the of the show, when I'm with was with them, it really then I could see it wear on them. You know, yeah. they, they weren't they were they all live in the Midwest. They're teachers and nurses and, you know, those kind of people. And, and this was really a strange world to have to sort of watch, you know, impinge on like a family vacation or whatever. Right. You know? Has there been a, has there been a role since like that is pretty identifiable in the public eye that you were close to getting that didn't get, that you didn't get say in television or oh, something the, or that we would know? Yeah, well, I got very close to, um, I don't think anybody knows this, uh, doing Mission Impossible. Yep, I knew that. Uh, no, I knew that. Between yeah. me and Tom. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. But then yeah. I, I had a fear of heights. Right. And that, that kind of killed that one. Well, also, so your, your, sort of your, uh, your, your physical presence, I think, would be too much for that series. You need somebody a little more subdued like Tom. Like that's true. Yeah. Like absolutely. Your smoldering you know, sexuality. Just the I masculinity. Think be, yeah. It's the smoldering sexuality. Scaring me, frankly. Thank you. That's no problem. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about this when you come out and start working. We should <laughs> yes. probably have a conversation about I that. I think but, so, um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I mean, I've auditioned for a lot of roles, series, a lot of series mm -hmm. that I wish I'd gotten. But, you know, you you really have to throw that away in a way, too, as an actor. I mean, I, I, most of your work as an actor, let's be real, is auditioning. Um, you know, John Rubenstein, you know who he is? He's yes. A, sort of in my yeah. generation yeah. of actor. You know, one, mm -hmm. uh, his, you know, his dad was Arturo. Rubenstein. Mm -hmm. um, he always said that my work is to come in and audition, you know, it's four times a week. Then when I get a role, that's my payday. Now I'm paid for all that work. Right. But that's my work. That's my job is to go in and audition. And auditioning is a real psychological jujitsu. And it still is. And yes, I still have to audition. Yes, there I do get offered roles occasionally, you know occasionally not so much anymore and i don't i don't work that much anymore anyway i yeah. do theater yeah direct teach um but yeah and and 
people, it's, that's, you know, that's why a lot of musicians hate being a musician. Like I love, I love, I play violin, I'm teaching myself piano. If in another life I would be a film composer, but my son has a lot of friends who are musicians and it is a bloody awful life. It's a really tough sure. business. Our business is too. So you have to come to grips with it, it psychologically. You can't see it as rejection. And what's hard with the audition process is it's not you're playing an instrument and you're not showing a book that it's it's you. You know, Kirk comes in and they go, no, we don't want you. Right. And it feels like it's you, you know, right. but it's not you. Right. And it's not, and you, to, to the jujitsu of it, you know what I mean? The psychological yeah. jujitsu of it, every time you audition, you better confront that. Some people love it. Some people just go, oh, I love auditioning. I'm like, great. I'm sort of on both. I mean, I do when it goes well, but it still gives me the willies and I still have to prepare not just the role, but I have to prepare psychologically. I have to go down in the car, put on some Bruce Springsteen, play it loud Hell in my yes. car. Fuck yes. You know, yeah. get my yayas out. You fuck yes. yes. You know, I mean, I'm serious. Oh, I love Springsteen. Yeah. yeah. Or whoever it is. Yeah. You know, hey. spring, you know yeah. Um, or Talking Heads is one of my favorites. Sure, great. So it's but like. But I do so find that how old I, am. I do that find that wild though. Like you know, you're you're a relatively seasoned man. I'll say that. Like it's crazy to me that people, you know, there are people who you're auditioning for probably you know half your age or whatever, or weren't even you know now two in those. And you got to sit there and dance for them. That that would I have to say psychologically drive me nuts. You have to have a thick skin. You have to have thick skin. I I was I that, that you know again another awakening for me. So I was this is like maybe four years after the show. Four years after this. So I'm still kind of sort of somewhat known, right? Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> and I'm on an audition uh, on the east side of town at Paramount. I go in. There, There's no, nobody else there. Like normally you come in and there's a waiting room of all your seven friends who you always compete against. And you're like, oh, fuck, you know. But so I'm sitting there by myself and it's for some big role. And they come out and they're, oh, Mr. Eckhouse, Mr. Eckhouse, we are so happy to have you come in. Thank you so much. We'll be right with you. Can we get you some water? Sure. Love some water. Thank you. You know, right. can we, you know, can we shine your shoes? Feeling you good. Yeah. You, massage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's all, yeah, it's all very nice. I'm like, and you're feeling like, yeah, <laughs> you know, they know who I am, you know, <laughs> right. blah, blah, blah. And you come in and you audition. Right. And they're like, oh, thank you. Oh, that's so funny. You're great for people. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. they shake your hand and the way out. And you're like, <laughs> Yeah, baby, I made it in this mission, you know. And you get in your little car and you drive across town because you got another audition. And now I'm on the west side of town and I'm going to the Sony lot. And I walk into the to the in, uh, into the waiting room. I kid you not, there's 27 actors. It's there's no <laughs> air conditioning. It's hot as <laughs> Jesus, right? I'm like, oh, cry. where's the? And they go, I, over there. There's, you know, you, where do I sign in? Over there, you know. And I and I you know, go into this, this little tiny little office with this poor bedraggled assistant, you know, looks up at me and I go, oh, hi. And I, and who are you? Uh, um, James, James Eckhouse. Who? J James <laughs> Eckhouse. What are you auditioning for? Uh, the role of Stan. All right, sign in. Signing in. Do you have a resume? Picture? No, I haven't had a picture and resume for right. 10 years, you know, that I walk in with right and, and and you're treated literally like dirt i mean in the <laughs> same day yeah, yeah, yeah. and that yeah. that's this business right you know it's like super nuts crazy right, right so you have to get used to it right well we'll let you go i mean we, we've been trying to get you on here for forever uh, dave calling my I producer has been, has been, yeah 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 but we had a, it was i hope you had a good time i had a fantastic time great time i mean you're the greatest you're well, the greatest i hope i haven't Oh, well, thank you. Not that you, and I love that, that you're going to be my manager. I mean, what a great connection yes. you've made. Yes. You're going to get rich. I'm, yes. You know, I'm going to have well, jobs again. Richard, so yeah. So it's all going to work. No, I had a, I had a really fun time. Good. And I really appreciate it. So uh, let me ask, fun. can I ask two Jim Walsh oh, questions before I wrap it up? Uh oh. Yeah. No, nothing specific. Don't roll your eyes. Don't get snobby with us, James. Don't get snobby. It's not going to be super specific. Uh, okay, don't be a okay. goddamn snob. I don't want to fire okay. you before I hire you. Um, uh, all right. Should Nat have told uh, Jim Walsh about Brandon's gambling thing? He paid off Billy Vera Duke, and he'd never told you. That's oh, I right. love Nat. He should have yes. told him. 
As a dad, I have a, I have a teenager now. He should have he told him. He should have told him. And actually, that's really good to say. I mean, he absolutely should have. You right. know? Now, Jim Walsh, how he dealt with it would be interesting. And how do you, because it's been some family members had to deal with very similar, uh, you know, right. all that stuff. Sure. Because at my age, all that stuff comes up. Right. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Um, this is not with my children. My children, yeah. you know, but some other people, extended sure. family. So how do you do it without shaming, but at the same time, talk truth, you know, and mm. deal with the problem and not, not let it, you know, not pussyfoot around it so that it just stays, you know, I've always, I've thought about that. Um, but yes, he kind of betrayed me because come on, Nat was, you know, we were friends. Your you know, buddies, you, know, you, you saved know, his like, ass. You saved his, you saved this fucking place a couple of years before. I mean, Jesus, Nat, let's go step yeah, that's up. Right. It was my, by the way, one of the mind roasting moments of my youth was finding out the guy who played Duke is the same guy who's saying at this moment, believe you. I couldn't, I, as a kid, I was like, I couldn't believe that was the same human being. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had some, we had some great people. Oh, yeah. definitely. That was the second question. Uh, is Jim Walsh, second question. of all the TV dads, did Jim Walsh have the most chest hair of any TV dad in history? What do you think? <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Let's just... <laughs> Let's just say when the robe was on, I mean, it was it was time for Cindy to get upstairs. Is what I'm saying. I got more crap from those boys, as as um, Luke would always say. Oh, you're wearing your hair suit. You're wearing your <laughs> it's hair very, suit. It's very it's very Austin Why Powers it ahead of its time. Hey, that's hormones, dude. Masculinity. That's hormones. Fucking a. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why there's none up here. Ton down here. That's why Dottie the secretary go. wanted her All swing right. at Jim Walsh. All right. The great, <laughs> great, great James Eckhaus is finally you're, here. You're f What's that? Finally here. Any okay, for you, for you, if you want me to come back, I'll come back. We'll do whatever. Colin, you, you hear that? But don't we can't talk about sports. We, we can can't talk, talk about sports. I'll talk about I'm a, I'm a sport idiot. You're a sport. Don't worry. We don't talk about sports. We fuck around. Don't you worry. But you, you, no, my, I mean I love sports, yeah. but I just don't you know, my team is the Cubs. From 1970, Ernie Banks, Ron mm -hmm. Kessler, Billy Williams. I mean, yeah, that's that's yeah. Billy Williams. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. No, I can do that. Fine. I can do that. Uh, my my producer is okay. saying so. We've had all kinds of guests on, and he is saying you are the hardest. You are the J. You're, you're sort of J. D. Salinger without any of that genius baggage. You know, you're the hardest guest that he's we've ever had to book ever in the history of the show. You're re you're recluse. Can we talk about? Can we can we talk about the genius stuff? I'm a little <laughs> okay. Okay, that, mild I genius, know. mild genius. Do, do I have to show you my SATs? What the fuck? It's <laughs> a good point. You're an MIT God, guy. That's true. That's a good point. But you're the hardest guest because okay. oh, I I thought I thought initially because I love that we we have all kinds of crazy guests on and my producer said to me one day James Echo doesn't want to come on. He's fixing his fucking kitchen. I was like, what What the hell is going? <laughs> it's a massive podcast. I can't get the guy's fixing his kitchen. Like I, I thought I thought you were bullshitting us, but you weren't. Do you know how much time I spend so much time at Home Depot that I kid you not, people come up to me. I, I people come up to me and they go, "Excuse me, excuse me. Do you think I should use this fitting for my for my sink or this one?" And I'm like, "Am I wearing an orange shirt?" All right, and and then I sit there and I talk to them, and and I and I, there are, are many times when the Home Depot guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You got to step in. You got to step in. Yeah, there you go. End there you story. go. End All right. of story. You're the All greatest. Right. We love Take you. Care. Anytime. Any, yeah, we we'll, we're very, very happy to have you on. Thank you so much, James.